Hello everyone and welcome to the week 92 update for Icarus. In this week's update, modules got changed again. We get horse mounts. DLSS3 got added for NVIDIA 40 series cards and many other changes. Let's start off with the module changes first as this was where the biggest backlash came from last week. You can no longer stack your modules which we're all aware of which happened in the week 91 update but the mass dampener module is now plus 10% movement speed instead of 5% movement speed for one module. You still can't stack these or you will get diminishing returns still. This is a good step forward. Having a plus 10% movement speed is really nice. So basically you're gaining one auxiliary slot because you're getting the speed of two mass dampeners now in one module so it gives you the freedom to test out of our build still you can still use more than one module but the diminishing returns isn't really worth it in my opinion let me know down in the comments what you think also this week we get the bone armor this was originally meant to be a twitch drop at the new frontiers launch but something happened and that didn't take place but this week you can go ahead and unlock the bone armor so it's available in your tier 2 blueprints and it's right next to your heavy obsidian armor. So it will obviously cost you 5 blueprint points. It's craftable on the textiles bench and it only requires bone and leather. That goes for all of the armor pieces. So for the full 5 piece bonus you'll get plus 15% melee damage plus 25 melee resistance. You will get a higher cold resistance with this armor over heat. This is what it looks like once it's equipped. It does look really cool, even if you do have Super Saiyan hair or whatever that is. So this is the Tyrannus or the horse mount. You can get this in the grasslands biome really easily on Prometheus, or you can get it quite easily around the Conifan biome and the Riverlands inside of Olympus and Styx. If you want a full comparison of all of the mounts, I put out a video yesterday comparing the Moa, Buffalo and Tyrannus. I will leave that link down in the pinned comments for you to check out. Let's have a look at the stats on the Tyrannus. It has health of 1,504, stamina 350, movement speed 200, sprint speed 1,320, weight carry capacity is 200 kg, health regen is plus 10 per minute, stamina regen is 2.1 per minute, melee and projectile resistance is, again is 40%, collision and an exposure resistance is only 0%. So the Tyrannus can only hold 5 items along with 1 G slot item and of course like I've already touched on 200 kg carry weight. You'll be happy to know the Tyrannus, the new horse mount, has been added to the beastry system as well. If you don't know how to bring that up, just press G on the keyboard. So you can start hunting these guys and getting more information on them. The next change is the obsidian tools, more so the obsidian pickaxe. So this is for anyone who's got new frontiers basically, as you can't craft the obsidian pickaxes on Olympus and Styx. So if you're unaware, the obsidian tools has something called a burning effect so for example burning a wound that is on fire reduces stamina regen and maximum health deals periodic fire damage now you need to remember that because i'm going to touch on that in a minute so with the change in this week's update though the obsidian pickaxe now can mine exactly the same as what steel can mine now to put that into context the obsidian pickaxe can now mine all ores okay and you can say technically mine titanium now with an obsidian pickaxe and you have a 30% chance of smelting titanium on the fly while mining it. I am going to have a more in-depth guide regarding the obsidian tools in a future build video I'm doing. But this is a really good option now. So if you're someone who usually likes building like a steel pickaxe, for example, or if you want to do like a new gathering build, I'd highly recommend you checking out the obsidian pickaxe if you've got new frontiers. One little pro tip though folks regarding the obsidian tools it does have like a chance to burn on attack so don't do what I did I was building the wooden structure and I accidentally fat fingered my axe and I swung it and I hit the wooden structure I was building and I set the whole thing on fire so you do need to be careful of that what you're doing with the obsidian tools because it, it, they can burn your structures down if they're flammable. Something else added this week which is only available for people who have the Nvidia 40 series graphics cards is the new DLSS3. You will need DirectX 12 turned on to be able to turn on frame generation which is DLSS3. You have a couple of options here once you've turned it on you go to super resolution 
and you can have anything from off, auto, quality, balance, performance and ultra performance. I did do a live stream on this the other morning. It was about an hour long. If you want to go and check that out, I'll link it down in the pinned comments. Where I was just going through testing out different settings for the DLSS 3. And I got really good FPS results with very little diminishing returns. The issue is, with it being DirectX 12, I for whatever reason have issues with Icarus and DX12. And running, having to run the game in DX12 on a 4070 Ti while running DLSS 3, I get random as hell FPS crashes where I'm getting like 10 FPS just randomly. I could be in the same place, go from 120 FPS down to 10. This is a great feature when it's working, but having them just random moments where your FPS just crashes is not viable, especially if you, let's just say if you're on a boss fight, for example, so hopefully the devs can tweak this a little bit better because it has gotten better over the past few days of testing this but them random fps drops are still making me sit on the fence if i want to use this feature or not and lastly the devs go on to say in next week's update uda resource supply packs now i'm not sure if i like the sound of this the devs go on to say next week for sale in the workshop will be a collection of uda resource supply packs these can be unlocked for ren and will allow the delivery of some planetary resources directly to you thanks to the orbital exchange interface now I'm not a fan of being able to call down ores to the planet. Seed packets are fine, but I think this takes out a lot of the legwork if you want to go out and get ores from caves. I'm not sold on this personally. I'll have to test it out, but when you can just start calling ores down from the space station, that kind of treads a thin line for me of just making the game really lazy and boring to play. But that's just my personal opinion. There's one final nice little change that they've done this week as well. The dev's going to say, fix the case where players would not get mission rewards if they weren't present for the start of a mission after they had previously completed one on the same prospect i.e open world i know one of my moderators valk had this exact problem and that is it for the week 92 update guys let me know down in the comments what you thought of the changes this week remember to check out my full mount comparison guide down below in the pinned comments also, if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. They are the two of the best free ways to support the channel. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to my YouTube and Ko-Fi monthly members. And a huge welcome to all of this week's new members. As always, I am currently working on multiple videos, so make sure you do keep your notifications turned on so you'll be notified when they go out.